Hey everyone, what's happening? Johnny Glock here. Um, first, let me apologize for not putting some videos out in a while. I've been having some problems with uh, transferring them um, to YouTube from my handheld um, HD camera, that JVC that I have. And uh, you know, as all of you know, anyway, I'm not the I'm not the most technically savvy person as far as uh, that kind of stuff is concerned. So I apologize. I'm going to have a bunch of them coming out. I've learned how this is my tablet I'm using. I've learned how to do it. So uh, I took the time to do that in between everything else. Um, the reason for the video today is I want to go over uh, the new trigger kit. It's been out for like six months, so it's not that new, but I just wanted to do an updated uh, version so people can have uh, an idea of what they're going to be getting uh, when they do receive it. Um, if they're thinking about it, you know, of course I mentioned talk about all that on the phone, but if you're thinking about it so you can uh, make a decision and uh, see what your options are. So basically, um, it comes like this. It's called the Next Generation Kit. Um, inside of it, we're going to break it down, what's actually in there. You know, traditionally, I used to have it level 1, 2, and 3. And that was combat carry, range target, and competition. But now, because everything's kind of fusing and meshing together because of the new styles of shooters and there's a lot of uh, interest now in shooting, I can't necessarily say that uh, you have a three-pound trigger pull is confined to competition only. You're going to see a lot of tactical guys using that, a lot of guys that are even operators and, um, you know, private security and things of that nature using these, the, this, uh, this trigger weight because uh, with proper training, they have learned to, to um, control it. I mean, trigger control, that's what it's about. So they have learned to control that and actually get the most out of their group. Um, and honestly, you know, uh, even if someone wants a four and a half, five pound trigger, or a four pound trigger with the design that I have, you know, the kind of like 1911 style, I'm not gonna go say 1911 actually, but the 1911 style that I have, um, you know, these are firing and resetting so quickly that even if you have a four and a half pound pull, it's gonna uh, subjectively feel quite different than that, it's gonna feel lighter. And uh, that's something to consider and that's why I have you call me so we can talk about these differences and what's going to actually work for you. So um, let's go through it. So basically what it comes with is, uh, you know, the main packaging, which is, you know, just this, the artwork, and then all the warranty stuff and uh, disclaimers on the back. Basically, uh, that's what it is. You can read all through that. I'm not going to bore you with it. Next, it comes with the actual trigger, and that is inside of uh this packaging right here. I used to make, I used to have these one-offs that said Gen, <clears throat> you know, it was crazy. It was like Gen 3 26, Gen 3 19, Gen 3 34, Gen, every single gun you can think of. But now because I've gotten so busy just to make things easier for me, I, you just get a little written in there in ink. Um, kind of helps me out and saves paper and, you know, everyone's happy. <laughs> and inside of here uh, also are the instructions for the set screw what to do with the pre-travel and post-travel, over-travel, reset, things of that nature. It also has break weight averages for all the different springs that I offer in the kit. If you're calling up and you want a competition or range uh, target sort of gun, you're usually going to be in the four to four and a half pound spring range, um, which comes to this pack, or if you're going to be using this for other applications or you know, who knows, you might like a heavier trigger pull even for those applications, but it also comes with a five and six pound because the Glock OEM is five and a half. So basically there's four different trigger springs to choose from. I'm usually only putting two in there depending on exactly what uh, we discussed. Also, it comes with an aftermarket safety plunger that comes from Lone Wolf. I, I really like it. It's MP3 coated or some kind of coatings on there. I think pretty sure it's, it's uh, uh, that. And then there's a reduced spring and then your hex wrench. And it just comes in this little baggie here. And the light is off. My goodness, imagine that lighting off one of my videos. Okay, so, uh, and that all comes in, I don't know if I held this up or not, in this uh, trigger tuning pack. So all that comes folded up nicely in there. I try to make it very user friendly. So every spring is color coded. Um, along with the color coding, I try to bring this up closer, comes this configuration chart. So this is going to show you how to actually, 
you know, configure your springs. If you want to change things up, I pretty much, we can pretty much talk about this on the phone, but if you want to change things up, it kind of has like a, the, the, um, you know, recipe for this type of feel written down or that type of feel for self-defense, tactical range target and competition, all color coded to correspond with the color coding of the springs. Um, basically with the trigger too, all you're doing is, uh, you know, you, you comes like that. You're cutting the, the tie here, pick, taking your entire assembly out and dropping mine in. Um, a couple things I want to say, these are not designed around dry fire. I don't sit there and put them in and go, Ch -ch -ch -ch. okay, that's, that's one goes out. You know, I'm actually live firing and taking them to the range to make sure they are functioning the way I want them to function. With that said, if you start tweaking the screws prior to live fire, you might be doing yourself a disservice because I have them set there because they're, they're designed to like, well, bam, you know, the slide weight is, everything is factored in. So um, before you, you know, go, you know, if, you, if you're gonna call me, that's fine. If there's an issue, issue. But if it's a, uh, if it feels a certain way during dry fire at first, then just give me the benefit of the doubt and take it to the range and shoot it. You know, it needs at least 250 rounds through it before you can even make a decision on, you know, maybe uh, this needs tweaked or that needs tweaked because it takes that long for the trigger to kind of seat into the gun. Uh, at least that's my experience and, you know, my suggestion. Um, some other things that I uh, want to talk about with the competition and range groups, I really push them. So, uh, you know, I want you to get the most out of their design for these kind of guns that are really high performance. And with high performance, you want things to be moving as fastly and as quickly as they can be. So uh, it is a production gun. If you drop it in your gun and even through dry firing, it's not resetting, then you can give me a call and we'll get that gun up and running. It's just a matter of a, you know, 360 degree turn with a hex screw or if the trigger tab safety is not popping out in the front, there are variances from guns to guns. So that's something that needs to be addressed. And, um, and like I said, customer service is, you know, it's call me. That's all you have to do. I'm a one man show. I will take your call. Any of you that have called or, you know, communicated with me, you know, every once in a while I might have a glitch in the system. I was on vacation and I had some issues of trying to get back to people and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, I'm available within the 24 hours. I'll, I'll call you back usually within the day. Um, if there anything else, uh, okay, so what I've been noticing, like, and this is going to be more talked about in the Gen 3, Gen 4 video that I'm going to be coming out with. Um, yeah, I guess I left the cow in the back. I'm going to be shooting a Gen 4, Vor 4, uh, not versus Gen 3, but I always get that question, what's better, Gen 4 or Gen 3? Um, now, for California, you usually don't have that to run the two bags, it's just the fun of you guys here. But, uh, so... They switched the bar, uh, they started it about a year ago, and um, it's standard now in all the Glocks and the housing. So the housing looks very different, and the uh, trigger bar is now stamped with a 3600 on there. If you get a Gen 4 group from me, unless you specify otherwise, or unless I'm doing a particular build, it's going to come with the Gen 4 bar, okay? There have been upgrades to these trigger bars. It just happens. Um, sometimes they're upgrades. Sometimes they're you know they're, they're needed. Most of the times when they do it, they're necessary. There's a reason for this. Uh, a lot of the companies just you know throw the Gen 3 bar in there because they figure hey it's it's tried tested tried and true. It is, but it's for the Gen 3 frame. You know there was a time when you know the Gen 3s didn't have the little indentation in the leg that held the strike. I mean the trigger spring. You know, now I know there's a lot of a lot of people talk about the dip, you know, the, uh, the the bump here on the vertical extension as being the Achilles heel of this thing, and it's just total malarkey. Um, you know, so it goes to say, like back when they, you know, put that new uh, you know hook thing on the Gen 3 bar, if YouTube existed at the time, you know, someone would make a video and be like, I had trigger pulls all messed up, man. I ground that damn new thing off there and it just worked fine. You know, so basically, uh, you know, you didn't have the ability to, to go viral or whatever with, uh, with some videos that are kind of not um, thought through the whole way. And very much so, that could have been the problem with the person who uh, did that. And uh, these are stamped bars. That's why when I get them, I do so much work on them to get them to be, uh, you know, detooled, deburred. I take them now to, you know, closer to 20, 30,000 grit with uh, CBN emulsion stuff. Sometimes kangaroo strop, strop them and stuff like that. So 
uh, it all depends on how you want it built. The only non-Glock part that comes in these usually is going to be the connector, the 3.5 connector, uh, unless you actually request otherwise or I deem it necessary for a certain kind of brake feel. Um, because like I said, these are custom pieces. They are one-offs. I am building these to your specifications uh, with a little bit of conversation and where I feel I can guide and give, give the best information that I can uh, to, toward my experience. You know, I, I, haven't, I haven't done the video yet, but I want to talk about like, you know, I shoot. So basically I know, you know, why I'm doing it and for what outcome I want to have it for. Um, and, and that really counts. You know, you can have, I, like I've stated before, you can have, you can have medic, you can have uh, mechanical inclination, but then you have to know why you're doing it and how you're doing it uh, and what the results are. You know, if, you, if you're going to reduce pre-travel, you have to take care of the vertical extension. There has to be some configuration changes. There has to be some changes to that in order to make sure you're not having any kind of uh, encroachment on the safety plunger. So, but this has all been thought out for you by me. So, um, with years of experience and trial and error and headaches and, uh, you know, also a lot of, a lot of breakthroughs and, and innovation and stuff like that. And that's why now... You know, it used to be the new geometry of the, you know, Beyond series, you know, went from the boss to the Beyond and now it's the next generation. That's because I'm not resting on my coattails. I have got this thing very, very close to what I would consider the best striker fire trigger on the market where you are safely contacting the wall within a sixteenth of an inch and then a sixteenth of an inch break and then, a, you know, dead stop and then a reset if that's the way you want it done. You know, I mean, I recently sent a trigger to someone that's doing a review, and I just sent them the, the trigger that I uh, basically would make for a department, you know, kind of stockish. And, uh, yeah, there was a lot of pre-travel, but, you know, that's kind of, kind of what he, he, had, he had alluded to. He wanted some pre-travel. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's purpose-built. It's not an option. Like, here's my option. You can either get A, B, or C. It's basically you call me up and I uh, one off these for you, and it's the last Glock trigger you're ever going to need in your gun, and uh, that's basically the way I feel about it, you know. And if it doesn't work for you the first time, or if there's issues or anything, that we make it work. That's just the way, or we, the proverbial we, um, the royal we. Uh, I'll make it work. Let's put it that way. So. That was just uh, another lengthier video than I wanted to do for, and I say that in every video, but uh, it's the case. Next generation kits. They're drop-in, 100% drop-in, built to your specifications. I break it down through pre-travel, wall feel, break travel, um, break weight, no over-travel, of course, unless you want it, and then the reset, we talk about the reset speed, length, uh, quickness to pop is if you want it aggressive how do you want that reset to feel tactily and uh, a bunch of different other nuances and I can really deduce that and help you when I hear about your shooting style and what you're using this trigger group for so the phone number is 941-376-4383 that's 941-376-4383 the um, Email is get Johnny Glocks with an S, get Johnny Glocks with an S at gmail.com. And the website is www.johnnyglocks.com. Um, pay attention, be ready, for, not pay attention, but uh, I'll, you know, you'll, get, you'll get notifications of new, some new videos that I'm shooting here, the Gen 3 and the Gen 4 one. I'm going to do one uh, also revisiting detailing the slide and the frame for this new group. I want to do one on... Um, the uh, striker and the safety plunger and issues that are happening there that I'm seeing a lot of. Oh, the last thing I want to say, some of the Gen 4s, when they, now that they've changed that bar, the, the weights are pulling a little heavier. Um, and it's just inherent to this new design. Basically, I'm doing my due diligence and, and trying to, about 10% of guns I'll get a call that say, hey, this I know you said and you advertised sub three pounds but this is pulling three and a half and uh after going through a bunch of different things sometimes we just can't get it out get it under three and a half and uh when usually when i hear something like that of course it's the gun <laughs> it's not my stuff but um 
you know, uh, we can talk about that on, on a phone conversation if that is the case. There's a bunch of different little things that we can do uh, to get that to be right where you would like it to be. And uh, I just thought I would mention that because it's I kind of try to keep things transparent, and that has occurred here and again uh, with the Gen fours and the new and the new not the Gen fours. I mean it's not Gen fours. It's the bar. When I say Gen four, I think of things like trigger. The the Gen four is a very well engineered gun, um, but they haven't got the obviously they haven't got this completely where they wanted it to. And this might be the last time. You know this has been changed uh, two or three times now. The Gen four bar. And like I said, the Gen 3 bar had some changes, but uh, that'll be a different video. So anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to shooting some more videos here sooner than later. Take care.